much of Indian Australian this week. What does it mean to you and the rest of the Indian Jets boys? Yeah, I think uh, it's obviously um, a week that we can celebrate past and present um, and, and future Indigenous players coming into our game. Um, it's all about celebrating um, our culture, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. Um, and it's, some, it's certainly a, a week that we enjoy. Um, we do a lot throughout the week and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun week. Can you talk us through the jumper a little bit? Yeah, well, a local um, designer, Luther Cora, um, has designed this jersey. Uh, we wore this, uh, the same one as last year. Um, there's, there's a fair bit to it. You probably can't see it all now, but, um, yeah, it just symbolises the Gold Coast. Um, there's handprints on the back that symbolises the, the 13, uh, the Gold Coast Suns players has played at the football club. Um, and yeah, and he's designed the boots as well, so it's the first time he's designed all of our boys' boots and um, he's done an amazing job again. We know that um, you know, indigenous culture and uh, it's so important to you, you've got your own academy obviously, can you tell us a bit about that and just how it all sort of ties in, how it's going and sort of what it means to you? Yeah, we've we found that uh, there's a real need to, to grow in indigenous talent. Um, in Queensland um, and, and, and more specifically on the Gold Coast. Um, there's a lot of young, talented Indigenous kids running around um, that we feel that we can really give them the best possible pathway for them to further their football um, and, and in saying that it's not just about football, it's about life skills and, and educating and hopefully get those kids to, to become the best possible leaders, young leaders that they can in the future. So have been working really hard with the community team. Um, the, the Suns have embraced it uh, really well, the players, the staff. Um, and it's going really well. How do you think, uh, I mean you've been in the league for nine or ten years now, how, how do you think clubs are sort of integrating Indigenous uh, players now, maybe it's something that the game's become a bit more familiar with over, over time? Yeah, well I think every, every, every team now has an AFL Indigenous jumper um, and Indigenous artist, so um, that's, that's certainly come a long way. Um, I, think, uh, I think maybe Essendon and a, and a couple of other clubs first started um, and now I think the AFL is, has completely embraced it and now you see every, every AFL club um, have an AFL jumper so it, it, it's amazing, I, we certainly do run out um, and proud, we're representing our families um, and, uh, and, and, and the community. And just the, I guess the different challenges that maybe guys like myself or a lot, a lot of people in the community don't understand, how do you think clubs sort of embracing Indigenous guys and the different challenges they come from? Yeah, I think it's still still all about educating um, the, the AFL world, the AFL community. Um, it's We get obviously different players from real remote communities. Um, we've had players up here um, from real remote um, communities in, in, North, in the Northern Territory and um, there, there's always going to be different struggles and, um, and um, cultural connections in all different ways like that. So um, it's just about further educating and, and really taking the time out to, to get to know the players individually. We're all different. Um, individuals, so, uh, but it's it's fantastic that the Gold Coast Suns have really um, embraced um, our boys, and um, there's a lot of good things happening here. Jared, I guess I can't imagine he's the newest Indigenous player in the club. What do you do to kind of introduce him to the football team? Kels, he, he's 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 ready made. You don't really need to um, say or do too much for him. He's he's coming with the right attitude. Um, he, he trains well. Um, and yeah, he's he's just a really good, young, respectful young boy. So um, I think the coaches know um, he's he's a special type of player, and um, we we love playing with him and having him around the club. You mentioned you do a few things throughout the week in terms of the stuff. Do you share some stories amongst the boys? We all come from um, similar backgrounds, but everyone's from different areas from around Australia. Yeah, uh, well, I think last year we had a, a whole club um, function where all the players um, did get to tell their story. Um, we'll do something similar that, to that in the next couple of days. Um, we've, we've, yeah, we've, we've uh, done the, the boots, that's something different this year. Um, and yeah, we've, we've launched a few different programs within the Indigenous programs at the club, so um, I think that's a massive step. Um, we've, uh, we've finally got our first reconciliation action plan to uh, wrap. That's, that's pretty really important that the club will, has embraced. Um, uh, the Welcome to Country Protocols, which, which is really important of acknowledging and um, understanding the, the local community. Um, so there, there's a few of, of um, the programs that we've launched. Jared, um, I understand that 
might, there might be something like an exchange of gifts or something created in the game against the Eagles. Can, is that right? Can you tell us? Yeah, there's a cultural um, exchange gift. So we're, we're taking um, a cultural gift from, from the Gold Coast um, um, and, and exchanging that with the West Coast, uh, with the West Coast Eagles. Um, so normally at the flip of the coin, um, that's when we'll exchange the gift. So our gift this year is um, a basket um, and, and fire, uh, fire sticks to making, um, to making a fire. And I'm not sure what West Coast um, are exchanging, but I think it's just really important to get that connection between the Yugambeh people and, and the Noongar people of West Coast and just that east, east meets west connection. So it's, it's pretty important and um, yeah, we think it's a great idea. Looking on field, like uh, you've obviously had a, a rough trot. Do you think you're, you're seeing signs on the weekend that you might be close to turning that? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's it was still a 75 or uh, 70 odd point loss, so um, we we're certainly not happy about that. But um, I think we showed, especially in that second half, um, in particular the last quarter, that um, we just got all the little small things right, the basics, the tackles. Uh, I think we won the contested ball, so. That's what we pride ourselves on, and regardless of who's in the football team, um, that's what what's expected of us to, to bring each week. So, um, whoever comes in this week, they know exactly what their role is uh, for the team, and hopefully, we can build on last week's game. I guess we know one guy that's coming back at least that's Steve May. What's, what, what is happening back in the team? Then, It'll be good to get Maisie back. He's um, he's obviously our key defender, um, and he brings a lot of leadership um, and and. Um, a lot of passion um, and grunt to our football team, so uh, hopefully um, he comes back in and he, he, all we expect uh, of Mays is just to, for him to play his role. Um, when you, I mean, it sounds like you might get a couple of other guys back to it, I'm not exactly sure how many just yet, a few more experienced guys. Like, what does that do for a team that's probably been a little bit more confidence in the past? The four, five, yeah, it just brings leadership, um, uh, and leadership brings um, just experience at certain times of the game um, where we, we need a bit more cooler heads under pressure um, and yeah they, they've obviously uh, been playing the game for a few years now so um, they know what to expect um, especially over there um, in, in front of the a west coast crowd um, hopefully we can um, play that ground oh we, we did play it pretty well um, early in the year so hopefully we can sort of emulate that um, this week Uh, yeah, they got a few um, uh, lively forwards, so um, I suppose it's up to the coaches to to work out the best possible matchup. But in saying that, it was certainly a team role on, on Eddie last week. Um, I got help from all my fellow defenders, um, Sean Lemons, um, Shady, and, and and the other boys down there. So um, yeah, it was a good job to to, to keep him um, goalless, but it was certainly a team role. What can you salvage with this season? We get a lot of pride um, and respect back. I think we've had a bit of a rough trot, trot for the last five weeks, but I don't know we've still got more than half of the year remaining, so um, we're, we're certainly not going to die wondering. Um, we're going to go out there and, and fight every single round, regardless of who's in the, who's in the team. So um, there's a lot of pride and respect um, amongst the, the playing group, and certainly um, if we can control that, then I think the rest will take care of itself. How much does it frustrate you personally that you've had the second year in a row and you just had so many injuries and you can't, I guess, put your, put your best team on the field and show what you can really do? Is it get a bit irritating after the ball? Oh, it does get, yeah, it does get frustrating, but well, that's football. Um, I think every club goes through injuries. We've had uh, a, probably a year and a bit now of, of a really rough patch, so I'm sure we'll come out at the, at the end of this a stronger and a lot more united team.